So this video is uh, to show you how to work with VEX Robotics, the equipment that you can see here. So the VEX Cortex is the main brain, and then I connect that with the USB to the computer. So my plan is to actually to code this robot. You can see this robot comes with different components. The VEX Cortex, the, the main brain, has input and output. If you look into here, I have on the outputs, I have different motors, motor one going through 10. So motor one and 10, they are two pin. If I use any other motors, they come with three pin, so I need to use the extension for the motors. But for now, I just connect them to one and 10. So motor one is connected to one side of this. So let me flip the robot, you can see underneath. So I have one motor here and one motor here that they are connected to number one and number 10 in the robot main brain. In the other side, I have inputs. So the inputs from the robot is one sensor in the front. That's what like ultrasonic range sensor. It's gonna pick the distance. It goes to the digital. So I connected the yellow one in number one and the orange one in number two. And I have a button connected to number 11 of the digital. So I have to like make a note of this. Every robot needs a battery. And then the battery itself has the connection like this. You can actually remove it and put it back in again. So I have again a pair, uh, spare battery here. I can connect it to the charger and charge it for these. So let's go back to the program. The program called Robot C for Vex Robotics. I'm gonna open the program. Again, the program is loading. Once the program is loading, I need to make a little bit of adjustment. Those two, like a small adjustment. One, make sure the robot is on the right platform. So you can go to the platform type. And then this is in VEX IQ. Mine is VEX Cortex. This is a VEX Cortex 2.0, so I need to change that. That's the first thing I change. Then I can start to write a program for it. Again, because this is a, has a sensor, some stuff on it, I'm gonna open a new file. Okay, on the new file, once you open, it just give me a very blank screen, nothing on it. So I can go to motor and sensor setup, start setting them up. So motor one, I'm gonna call this like left motor. You can call it whatever you like. I'm gonna call it left M. The port 10 was connected to the, to the right motor. Again, I don't know what's right and left is, but I'm just giving them a name. The type of a motor, I'm gonna select 393 motor. That's the type of motor connected to this. Again, type of motor that we have here. I can go into like the sensor. So just give me a minute for now. I set up the motors and I press OK. So the motors are set up there. Now, for instance, if I create a loop, I create like a, a whole um, loop of while zero is equal equal to zero means forever. So I'm going to create a block on this. So inside this block, let's just put motor and give it the command, motor. Uh, so I need to give a value to a motor. So motor is asking for the port. I'm gonna put it on the top. I define that as left M. So I'm gonna say motor left M is equal to 50. So again, you can give it any value between minus 127 to 127. So let's run this to see what's happening. When you are done, you can compile the program so it's gonna give the, if there is an error on it or not. Again, you can save it. Now, the next thing I do, I wanna see whether, uh, again, the first time that you use the robot, you can do actually firmware download, making sure that the, the, the Cortex has the newest version. So let's do that first. Again, this will take a while. Uh, the program, again, is gonna wipe out whatever is there. It could be like an old code in there from years ago. So I'm gonna wipe out that code, put the new code in there. Again, it's just downloading the new software. Okay, it did the CPU restart. So let's download it to robot. Now, when I download it to robot, I need to turn this one on. Okay, it asked me it's not on, I turn it on. Make sure that you lift it because it's gonna run, right? So you can see right now, I give a power of 50 to that. So that will work forever until I stop it from here. So what I could do, I could actually continue my code. I say, okay, left motor 50, I'm gonna say, copy the same code and then change the left to right.
right m is equal to 50. So let's download the robot again. And then start it again. Now you can see this is going forward, this is going backward, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want this to happen. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change this 50 to minus 50 and then download it to robot again. Now if I check, it should move forward with the speed of 50. Now let's put it on the floor and see what's going on. You go with the constant speed of 50 until I stop it from here. So it actually carried the USB with, with it. So we can, we, can, we can remove that in the program. So I can go to the sensor and start setting up the sensor. So again, let's uh, close this. Go back to the program. I need to define the sensor. So we go to motor. Uh, the type of sensor we use is a digital sensor. And then is number one is a sonar sensor. I'm gonna use centimeter. So once I select it, it's selected two pins beside each other. The first one should be the input, which is yellow. The second one should be the orange. I use number one and two. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna give this as a name. Let's just give this a name of S1, okay? So S1 will give me the distance. Now, if I don't anything, if I just compile the program, and then let's load it to robot. Now, the, the, again, the robot is already connected to the sensor. If I bring my hand here, I should see some values here. I don't see them, so I may need to go to view and then to robot and look for debugger window, okay? Debugger window, show the values for sensors. Now you can see if I bring my hand here, it should show the value here. So let's start it. You see it's showing the sonar. The distance right now is at minus one meaning infinity, but if I bring my hand in front of it, it's come like to 15, 12, and then you can clearly see the distance here, making sure that the sensor is working. So let's just stop this and then go back to the code. So in the code, I wanna say, if the sensor value of that sonar sensor is this, do something else, right? For instance, if you see an object, go around the object. Let's say, let's do that. So I'm gonna do that uh, in order to uh, make that happen. I need to read that sensor value. So let's just keep that as the default. I'm gonna say if, so let's have like an if in there. If sensor value, so when I use the if, uh, I should write the function sensor value. So I'm gonna go to the variable here to find that sensor value, sensors. This is, either, again, I'm not good in memorizing stuff, but this is the, what I meant. Sensor value of, inside that will be S1. If the sensor value of S1 is less than, let's just put the distance in there, right? It's less than uh, 20, less than 20 centimeter. So it does something. And, Again, at, at the same time, it should be less than 20 and more than, and more than zero. I don't want it to be minus one, minus one is infinity. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add the same thing. So and, again, I could be using two ands, but again, I'm not sure about the syntax at this moment. And more than zero. And more than zero. Then I'm gonna create a block here. Inside this block, I can define what to do if that happened. So if that happened, so let's make that to turn around Right? So turning around, I'm gonna make this zero. Make that minus 50. It's gonna do a turn like this, right? But it's up to me how to turn. Right now, I just wanna do a turn like this. Now, when I turn, I have to give it a time. So let's, let's put it a time like in, in, in Arduino, we use a delay. Here, I'm gonna use the function called wait millisecond. So I'm gonna say wait millisecond of 1,000. Again, like, okay, let's do it 2,000 for two seconds, do the test. Now, I'm gonna run this code, compile it, to see whether I have any error. So it looked like it said that unexpected because I forgot the semicolon at the end of the code. So you can get a closer look on the code uh, that, that's visible. You can see, wait a millisecond, you need to have a semicolon here, a semicolon after every line. So I'm gonna compile it again. Okay, I don't see an error. Hopefully it's gonna work this time. So let's download it to robot and then see what's going on. I'm gonna start the robot. Yeah, the battery is very low, unfortunately, but hopefully it's gonna work for a second. So right now it's seeing my hand because the sensor value is like this. It keep turning, right? It's gonna move forward. You see that? That's the, that's the cycle for turning. Let's move one more time. 
the cycle of two seconds is over. That's the robot is scanning. So if I put this on the floor, it's not going to hit any object. So if I put it, it's going to reach to the wall. You see, it's going to turn again. Right now, it's a little bit problematic because the battery is very low, so it doesn't have sufficient power to do the run. So again, this was a very basic overview of VEX Robotics. Thank you for watching.